I've had this mount now for six months, so I thought I'd let you know what I think of it. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Well, um, as I said at the very beginning, I've had this mount now since uh, October last year, so it's about six months. This is the AM5 from ZWO. Um, and I thought I'd let you know what you know I've been doing with it, um, my experiences with it, and what I will personally be using it for. Now, this mount obviously has um, the ability, it's, it's a strain wave mount, as everybody will know, that won't be any mystery to anybody. And um, the nice thing about it is that you don't have to use a counterweight with it um, if you're using it up to 13 kilos. So no sort of counterweight hanging off the bottom and swinging it around to snag cables or um, hit another mount if you've got one nearby. Um, you can obviously use a counterweight if you go up to 20 kilos. Um, I will never be doing that, so I haven't got the counterweight. Um, I'm not sure that I would actually want to put a really big heavy telescope on this, um, even with a counterweight, because this primarily it seems to be used for with tripods. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, um, or you know, maybe you can get a custom-made adapter. I've seen some adapters for Skywatcher tripods and Ioptron tripods, which is what I've got because I never bought the, the tripod that um, ZWO sells. So um, I really want to use this as a more portable and easy to move around rig. So I really have no intention of going over the 13 kilos or probably even getting close to 13 kilos. But obviously it's up to the individual on um, what they want to use it for. So I'm not saying, you know, don't go ahead and use it with a heavier scope, but I'd feel a little bit nervous about having a heavy scope um, sitting on this only on a tripod, um, I'd be a little worried about it potentially falling over, that's the only thing. Now, um, the tripod that I got, oops, is the Ioptron um, carbon fibre tripod. I could source this locally, so that's why I went with this. And I also got the um, extension pair uh, for uh, the tripod to put the AM5 on. Um, because it was compatible with us and I know that there is they can be compatible with the Skywatcher tripods as well and also I didn't want the um, sort of imaging train or the telescope running around and um, hitting one of these legs. Um, I also got if you can see it um, this uh, hammock over here um, which I think is well in my experience anyway a must if you're going to be using this mount um, with the tripod and you want it to be as steady as possible. Um, so the way, let's just put this on top and I'll show you what telescope I've been using it with. So here it is set up with the RedCat 51 which is what I've been using it with. Um, as I said I'm not going to put a heavy scope on this because I would be a little bit concerned sitting on the tripod and as it slews all that weight on the top. Um, you know, and maybe a little bit of breeze, whether that could um, tip it over because the tripod, the tripod's pretty steady for a rig like this. I'm just not sure about if you're slewing with a really heavy telescope, like some of the big Celestron telescopes that I have seen, what well, you see uh, as part of the advertising for ZWO. I mean, it's obviously got the capacity for it with the counterweight, but um, I'm not going there. I'll probably put the Ascar 65 PHQ on it. Uh, that would be okay. That's a, be a little bit heavier uh, imaging train than this, but not a huge amount. I think this comes to, I think it was about 4.8 kilos from memory. So the Red Cat 51, I've got a little QHY guide scope on here. Um, over here on this side here is the ASI Air Pro, along with the terrible Wi Fi. Um, I've got some 1.25 inch filters in here, Optimong ones. And uh, this is an uh, ASI 533mm Pro, uh, which I'm using on this because this Red Cat does not have good stars out to the very corners. And by having that more restricted sort of square sensor, 
um, it kind of deals with that and as we know Blur Exterminator will, will deal with that anyway. I really do like this, this mount and it's been giving me really good results. Um, I'll show you in a second but I've been doing a lot of uh, 10 and even 15 minute exposures particularly when I've been up at my sort of darker site where it's more bottle two to three um, and that seems to be not a problem as long as there's not a bit of wind around. Um, at back here at home the nice thing is with it being a more compact setup I can actually squeeze it into the uh, observatory next to my big double rig so um, and it can stay away from they don't touch each other so it's quite nice that I can sort of use a second imaging rig in the observatory. So when it comes to guiding um, I've just been using one second exposures um, through the guide scope and um, that seems to have been working perfectly for everything I've done so far for the um, 5 minute, 10 minute or 15 minute exposures. My guiding on a good night is uh, sort of around 0.4.5 total RMS error and yeah it can get up to about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 at times um, usually due to a little bit of breeze uh, but again it doesn't really sort of affect this too much being such a wide field of view. So making adjustments to the telescope so you can get your nice polar alignment is pretty easy. Um, you just I'll probably flip it around here. Uh, on either side there's one of these which you loosen off and then you just um, rotate this around um, that way and then I'll just tighten that up for a second and then for here you just loosen those off and you make really nice adjustments here and it's really easy to do um, and quite smooth. Obviously when you're getting close to polar line you've got to make very small movements because it can sort of move off quite quickly. Uh, with regards to when it's polar aligned and then I tighten everything up, uh, yeah it does move a bit but it doesn't really move um, away from the polar alignment that I've already had prior to tightening these to any significant degree. Um, my CEM60 does exactly the same thing. It, uh, it has quite a lot of movement actually, um, probably because I've got a bigger scope on it, but um, this one I tend to find that I can just tighten it up and I can check it again and it's still, it may have moved um, you know, down a little bit or left or right or something, but not really anything significant that would make me want to adjust it again. So. I've been finding that's been working really well. Overall, I really like this mount. I like the fact that it's really portable to pick up and carry around. Um, so if you're moving it in and out of the house, you're not straining your back to, to move it. So where I have it at the darker site, I'm moving it in and out. It's very quick and if some clouds are coming and I'm worried about rain, it can get moved in very quickly, just all in one movement. I don't have to start taking off the telescope like I do with the CEM60. Um, it's been guiding really well, um, it's performed extremely well. I did mention um, about the, the hammock and having a bit of a weight in there, particularly if there's a bit of wind. So when I'm at home I'm just using this 2.5 kilo dumbbell and I just um, pop it into the hammock, these three compartments. And um, that really does make a difference. I mean, I started using it without a weight in the hammock because I didn't have a hammock. And the guiding wasn't great. Um, even, you know, the, with a bit of light wind, I did find the tripod was a little bit susceptible to movement. Admittedly, I did have it on a deck and not on a solid um, concrete sort of floor or whatever. But um, by putting in the weight, it seemed to just sort that out completely. Uh, up at my Bortle 2 3 site I just have a big sort of smooth rock and I just pop it in there and it seems to make all the difference to the stability. So what do I not like about this mount? Well to be honest with you not a lot. Uh, the only thing is that I wish perhaps the power cables like the USB and the power going up to the ASI Air um, were not at the front because you know having cables at the front you worry about is it slewing around it's going to get snagged as a telescope moves. I have had it set up like this. Um, for those of you who are observant you may have noticed that when I was talking about it just previously I had that plugged in there. Um, it actually goes in over here and that uh, sends the power up to the ASI Air which controls everything and that's the USB connection there. Um, so as I said, you know, having cables out the front here, you'd be a little bit worried. I have set it up like this, um, pretty, pretty basic. 
and I've never had a problem. It's never caught and I've let it image quite a lot all night. So this works fine. Um, I don't know what the solution would be. I know my Optron mount and then I route it through the through into the saddle and it comes out the back of the saddle. But I don't know how you'd do that with this. It's a pretty small um, saddle, so I don't know where you'd fit all those in. So that would be the only thing that, um, I don't know whether they can redesign it or, or even make this a little bit thicker so you can actually have the power coming out the back. But as I said, this seems to work fine. Uh, I know it doesn't look very uh, neat and tidy, but never had a problem. And of course the power goes in the front here and you just plug it in like so. And I just have the um, 5 amp 12 volt power supply sitting in the hammock so the weight is taken off it's not pulling on the mount at all and just in one of the three compartments I happen to have on this particular um, hammock uh, one's got the weight and the other one has that uh, power supply uh, now it's it's a 12 volt in 5 amp and um, I can run everything off the ASI air including the cooled camera so it's not a problem um, as far as power is concerned. There's a couple of things I probably should mention. Um, one is that this has a braking system in it, so if you lose power um, while you're imaging, it won't suddenly sort of flop to one side and damage your imaging rig. It'll stay exactly where it was pointing. And um, if you do need to move it back to the home position after you know getting power back to it, um, you can just use the hand controller um, to get it back. It pays at the end of a night's imaging to tell the mount to go back to home position so you're all set up for the next imaging session. Um, now I won't go over the buttons because they're pretty obvious or the inputs. Um, you can look on the website for that. Uh, one other thing, when you get the mount, um, it's by default it, the pitch of this part here um, is 0 to 60 degrees and if you need to get between 45 and, and 90 degrees there are instructions but there's a, a little um, nut in here and you use a one of those hex spanner things to adjust it so that you can get that um, angle uh, if required. I don't so I'm using it in the 0 to 60 degrees um, position. Okay so let's jump into Pixinsight and um, I'll show you one of my 15 minute subs, which I think is a good indication of how well this thing can guide. Obviously in light winds or no wind, um, and if there is a bit of a wind, well that primarily comes down to the stability of the tripod, I think, and not really to do with the guiding as such. Um, I'm going to zoom into the middle here, because this is the best place to see what the stars are like, and you can see they're really nice and round, and this is, uh, as you can see up here, 900 seconds, so 15 minutes. Um, I'm not going to show you the corners because the corner's not perfect, but that's due to the Red Cat 51 not having a perfect um, flat field um, like it's supposed to. And look, just as a quick example of an image I've done with the AM5 and the Red Cat 51, this is um, LBN1077, or at least the pointy end of it. And um, this was 10 minute exposures uh, for. Um, the RGB and the HA so um, yeah I was happy with the result and you've seen this in a previous video this example um, I other examples I've got but I'm still in the process of collecting data up at the dark sky site or dark earth sky site um, and they're sort of 40 hours plus so I haven't processed those yet um, and I'm still collecting data as the weather allows and when the moon goes away but um, yeah, really happy with this image uh, with the setup of the AM5 and the Red Cat 51. So look, that's been my experience using the AM5 mount uh, over the last six months. Now, admittedly, I'm using a relatively light uh, imaging rig on it, the Red Cat 51. Um, I'll happily use the ASCAR 65PHQ as well because it's not a heck of a lot heavier and they're both well within the 13 kilos limit without having to use a counterweight. I have no intention of using a heavier system on it uh, for three reasons. One, I don't want to put a counterweight on the end because I bought this because I don't have to put a counterweight on. Um, number two, I like to move the uh, imaging ring in and out of the house really easily without sort of straining your back, etc. And you can do it really quickly if the weather turns bad suddenly and you've got rain coming in. Um, that's a little different with my CM60, which uh, you've got to take the 
counterweight off, the telescope off, and even then it's still quite heavy to move in. And the other thing is, um, I want to use this on the tripod, and I, to be honest with you, I wouldn't be risking a heavy scope on a tripod. Sure, if you could get this onto a tri pair or a pair, that would be fine, and then the counterweight, um, but uh, I wouldn't really trust a tripod to a heavy imaging rig, particularly if it's slowing, but a wind comes up and you're not expecting that. This video has been about this mount only, and um, I'm really enjoying using it. Uh, obviously, people's experiences may differ. Um, you see that across the board on all types of mounts, all makes of cameras. Um, somebody's got a bad experience that they uh, want to share. And I guess that's the thing that we have to deal with. It's what they call the lottery of um, when it comes to amateur astrophotography gear. And we're not paying professional grade prices for professional grade gear. Having said that, you still should get um, a piece of equipment that's working and working well. So, um, as I said, you could, if yours doesn't, send it back, get another one, uh, get a replacement. But this one here, I'm really happy with. Uh, it's been performing nicely. I do have some more uh, videos coming up, and I've got one coming up um, about, this is the imaging rig in Spain, so it's running SG Pro. Um, would rather it was running Nina, but that's what they run with. Um, anyway, uh, I should have a video about that because it's galaxy season over there and I'm imaging a galaxy currently. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them um, below and I will respond to them. Whether it be a question that you want to ask me about uh, this mount and my experience with it, or if you've got a comment about your experience with the mount, uh, that could still be useful for other people reading the comments to try to decide whether they want to buy an AM5 or an AM3. Um, but for me, I'm happy with it. And uh, look, until next time, um, I hope everybody's getting lots and lots of clear skies.